In this video, let's talk about why you should never, ever, ever, almost never wait for tree bills starting now. This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters First. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. What's up, Matt with Adjuster TV here. Let's talk about why you should never wait on tree bills, which is the mo really the most common thing, which is why I talk about this. Um, invoices, estimates, and that sort of thing on your claims. Why you should never let your, your file sit on your desk waiting for stuff, okay? And this is rule number seven in the rules for adjusting, which is kind of an ongoing thing that I have, where these are the most critical things that will separate you from your competition, which these the other adjusters are your competition for sure. So what do I mean by this? Well, in the course of handling a particular claim, we'll say, uh, generally speaking on wind claims, right, where there may be high winds, knock trees down on power lines, maybe there's a power surge, right, and, and the TV's not working since the power came back on. Um, there's tree, there was a tree laying across the roof of the house and, the, and a, some uh, arborist or some, you know, tree company came along and removed that and hauled it off, right, maybe even before you got there. Um, those people, you have to find a way to pay for those things if they need to be paid for, right? So in the case of the tree, generally speaking, what happens is, is that you go out to the house and the tree has to be off the house for you to do the inspection. So don't be like, be like, well, man, this one's a really serious one. I'm gonna triage this one to the front and go out there and then there's a gigantic, huge leafed out tree on the house, you can't see anything. You're gonna have to come back, right? They gotta get that tree off the house. Um, what happens with, with the tree bills, because you can pay to cut that tree off of the house so that the repairs can be made, right? Then this is where the policy gets weird. So in a whole other video, I'm not gonna talk about the specifics of trees. Um, actually, we have a training for that on Adjuster TV Plus. But the guy that cuts the tree off the house needs to be paid for that, right? Um, generally speaking, it's, and it depends on the event with hurricanes, it's pretty much whatever they can, whatever they charge is what you're gonna end up paying typically. But you can also write your own tree bill, which is what I recommend that you do because especially with, with uh, widespread wind damage, tree guys, and even if they've got a, a you know, a big uh, sort of an operation with a bunch of bucket trucks and a whole bunch of guys with chainsaws and skid steers and the whole nine yards, right? What they're going to do is they're gonna just drive down the street and run up to the, you know, let's say a tree on the house and they'll run up to the front door, the homeowner's stepping out to get the mail or whatever, or they get called to it, right? And then they're gonna cut the tree off the house and they'll say, we'll send you a bill. You should get it in about a week or so, right? It'll say something like that just to kind of kick the can down the road, which is, I mean, it, truth, truthfully, it's really the best, about the best that they can do because they're gonna be so busy taking trees off of houses for not just a few days, not just a couple of weeks, but maybe possibly months, right? So what happens is, is that you talk to the homeowner, that guy's already been through, um, they didn't give the homeowner a total, right? They didn't give the homeowner a bill or anything. They just, the homeowner's telling you on the phone, yeah, they just said that they were gonna give us a bill, you know, in a few days and, uh, and that, you know, we could take care of it then. So what do you do in that circumstance? Are you going to trust that the tree guy is like a man of, who's not gonna be overwhelmed by all the things that he's got going on and, and not have things go sideways and not find that one week turns into five weeks, right? Because it may be that he just goes out from light to light and even after dark with spotlights or whatever, and all they do is just cut trees off. And he's like, I'll just, when, after we get down to where things slow down a little bit, then I'll start writing out bills to people and then mailing them to them or emailing them to them or going to their house and, and collecting on all this stuff, right? They're, they're gonna do, they're gonna do that later, right? So you're gonna trust that this guy is, is, is gonna follow through on that and that you're just gonna get in a couple days and just to like, well, you know, I'll you know, we'll come out and take a look at everything and write an estimate and still haven't gotten the tree bill yet. And well, I'll just wait, we'll just leave the, I'll just leave the claim open, right? The problem with that is, is that you're leaving the claim open, right? You're not allowing the homeowners to move forward with their repairs, which is the primary thing. Second thing is you're not getting paid on that claim until it's closed. The third thing is, is that it's wrecking your cycle time just sitting there and it could sit there Theoretically, I mean, it could sit there for weeks, right? So what do you do? What you do is you do your job, which is you are, as an adjuster, you're also an estimator. You write, a, you write an estimate for, basically, and everybody takes pictures, so it's not like you're not gonna have photos of this thing. That's a big tree, you know, I would say four guys, uh, a half a day each, four, you know, I always do it half days or full days, right? So four hours or eight hours. 
four guys, eight hours each at whatever the, the, the rate is and the exact and exact mate for that particular, you know, getting the tree off the house. Right. Um, and pay it. Right. And then put in some th something for debris removal. Everybody's got a limit for debris removal for hauling off trees. So you try to, you know, reasonably, you know, peg that limit if you can and pay the, pay the homeowner. Say, well, I'm going to pay you this right now to get you going. If your tree guy comes back and he says it's going to be more than what I came up with here for this amount, $3,500 or whatever it is, then call me back and we'll get it sorted out. But I just want to get some money in your hand. I don't want to hold your claim up waiting for this guy because who knows, he might get busy and it might be a little bit longer than he said, right? Be kind about it, be, but be reasonable and kind of put that into their head like, all right, well, you know, he's, he probably is really busy. Um, he might not get, get to me, back to me, get that bill to me. And I really need to get the windows taken care of because there's big holes in them and there's a big thing on the roof and the, the other contractors, he's not going to start work until he gets a down payment and I got to pay that out of the insurance stuff, right? Get some money in the homeowner's hand right away. Write that bill up, do what makes sense, right? And if you need to ask a uh, field, uh, field you know, manager or your regular manager and say, hey, listen, I don't have a whole lot of experience writing tree bills. I, I texted you some photos of this thing and you know, they don't have a bill. They don't know when they're gonna get the bill. What do I do, right? What, how, how should I write this up? And they'll tell, they'll tell you, they'll say, well, use these line items, make sure you write out this and that and put it in your, you know, make a note in your file. They talk to me about it and send it in, right? Don't, don't, and this goes for TVs. The TV's not working. Homeowners got to take that to Best Buy and get a tech report that says power surge from lightning, you strike, uh, damage the motherboard and the thing, whatever it is, uh, damage beyond repair or repair will exceed 60% to replace the item recommend replacement or it's going to cost us much to fix it and then you can pay off that but you're not going to get that because the homeowner may be like well, well just put that tv down in the basement we'll buy a new one and then some other time we'll take it to best buy and then they'll forget about it for months right so don't let your file sit open waiting for stuff like that just pay for, for tree bills pay it for the tvs you just leave it as an open item and say hey i can't pay anything until you guys take it to best buy and i just have some, something from a tech saying what costs damage how much it's going to cost to repair it uh, or if that's going to be too much to replace it that's all I need. Whenever you get it, just let me know, right? And then, but I'm gonna pay you on everything else right now, right? So don't, don't sit on, do not sit on claims waiting for, really, I, I, there's not much I can think of aside from like, maybe like siding or roofing sample like for ITEL. It'd be probably be the only thing that I can think of. If you wanna watch the rest of this episode where I answer other questions ad free, as well as get access to a members only segment question and answer, head on over to adjustertvplus.com and become a member right now.